Well, hello, YouTube. It's been a while since I've been on. I'm back to work. You know, as you know, some of you may know, I was on disability for a while. So that's why I was making all my videos. While I'm back to work, and I've been quite busy. So, I feel bad. I haven't made no videos. But today, I'm going to make a video. Or tonight, I should say. It is actually November 29th, 2014. This video is a long time coming. I owe it to you. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another build on my copper plume bale. I'm going to do a triple parallel 20, 22 gauge uh, nichrome build on my copper plume bale. Okay. So I'm going to do triple wrap or triple wire around 1 8 drill bit or 1 8 screwdriver. And I'm going to do, probably, I'm going to go with about a 7 wrap. So that's going to make it 27, uh, 21 strands of wire. That's crazy, right? But it's cool, I have to admit. So I'm going to go ahead and start peeling off some wire here. So let's, here, let's go here. I'm going to chop off some wire. And I'm going to do the triple parallel, a dual triple parallel field. I'm going to use nichrome this time. It's going to be a hot. Or actually, it's going to have a fast ramp up. It may be a pretty hot vape, but it's all good. I've been using my Cerberus for a while now. The Cerberus, I actually kind of like it, the, the build that's in there. But I want to switch it up here and go back to my plume veil. All right, so I have three strands of wire here. Three strands, 22 gauge can or a nichrome wire. I'm gonna wrap them on one eighth screwdriver. Okay. And uh, we will see how well this can produce. So remember when you're doing as most of you already know, when you're doing a parallel build, you want to make sure that your wraps are nice and even you don't want no overlapping of any of the wires starting this these wraps is kind of difficult with this 22 gauge is so thick Shed some light over the subject. Now when I did, I did another video with a four wrap, single, I did a single coil, four wrap, or a four strand, nine wrap, parallel coil, a parallel build. I didn't actually show the build on camera. Okay, I lost my count here. Bear with me folks, I just lost count on my wraps.
That's six reps. And rep number seven. Okay, got the wire here that's being a little shady with me. So that should have, I'm going to do a seven reps. It'd give me 21 strands of wire. Let me scout my strands real quick. I'm going to pull some of these a little bit tighter. Seven reps. All right, we are golden. That's seven reps. Three pieces of the wire. Let me do a manual focus on this. Okay, it doesn't look the cleanest right now, but it will as soon as I get it on the atomizer and do some dry burning. I'm going to go ahead, snug this up a little bit more make sure get these reps as tight as possible okay About seven is about as far as I was going to be able to get with this one. With this size of wire. Okay, so what we have before I. Okay, so I'm going to angle it the opposite direction, but I'm also going to push it this way. I'm going to push it this way a little bit after I get them cinched down here. But and the trick is being that the coil is covering the holes on the other side, so I'm going to do a dual coil. I got to leave me enough slack here to move this coil upward so I can get my other leads through and then I'll be able to torque it, you know, get it all corrected. So I'm going to leave that much space approximately about an eighth of an inch on the legs which also gives me room to push that coil towards the center anyhow Okay, so now I'm going to just move that coil upward so you can see those holes at the bottom side where I can get my other lead, leads through there. Okay. Okay, we're good. I'm going to 
trim these on. Let's build the second coil. Yeah, starting the wraps on a parallel build when you got more than two wires can be a little bit tricky. Just a tad bit tricky. Okay, this one is being a little more stubborn the first than the first one. Careful, the wire penetrates your skin real fast and easy. Just a little blood. That's what happens when you get 22 gauge stabbed in your finger. Bear with me, folks. I'll be back. All right, folks. Sorry about that. I'm back. I had to put a Band-Aid on my finger. I had two pieces of wire that actually went right into it. <laughs> I want to put a Band-Aid, but it didn't stop bleeding. So, got to do what you got to do. Anyways, here we go. So, I've got the second coil wrapped here. And we're going to get this inserted into my atomizer.
on you, I'll booger you. Get in there. Gotcha. Now I want to make sure that I leave about the same amount of length on the legs on the second coil as the first coil. So that's why I can angle it and push it towards center. And we are about good there. Now that I got that trimmed out or set in there, we're going to tr carefully trim the other legs on the second coil. See, now when we trim the legs on this side that are coming underneath that coil, we need to make sure. Yeah, we don't damage this coil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this coil out some. Okay, now that I trimmed it, it still has some legs sticking out. I'm going to pull this outward and then I'm going to sneak behind here with my flush cutters. Trim them out. Perfecto. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these coils towards the center as much as possible. And then I'm going to tip them down Try not to push the fire button while you're adjusting. <laughs> that could be disastrous. Okay, so what we got here, let me turn off the autofocus, let me focus in on you. Now these coils haven't been dry burned and pinched yet. I got an angle on the slight angle on them. I'm gonna you know clean them up a little bit here. Okay, now do you see there's good clearance between the center pin and the coil itself? I'll just straighten out my center pin just a tad. First burn, they're uneven, you know, very ugly, sloppy looking. Always remember, just pulse them. Give them a nice pinch. Okay, first pinch. They're already heating up a little more even now.
I'm also running on dead batteries right now. I've been using these batteries all day long. Like we got one heating up a little faster than the other. Let me just verify all the screws are tight. When you got two identical coils and one seems to heat hotter or faster than the other, sometimes it's just a matter of retightening the connections. I'm going to get them angled just the way I want them. up time surprisingly not as fast as I expected using the nichrome but these coils are glowing pretty nicely okay so you can see the angle I put on those coils okay they're coming up pretty even now very nice Let's let this cool down. We're going to wick it up. Today I'm going to use some Chinese cotton. It comes in a sheet. Okay, I've been experimenting with it. I don't know if I'm totally impressed with it. The flavor, it's it kind of just, the flavor doesn't uh, impress me. You have to change the cotton a lot sooner than if you're using regular organic or unbleached organic. Yeah, when you're making coils this long, it can be a little trickier to wick it. Pretty easy to work with this Chinese cotton, but again, I'm not impressed with the longevity of the flavor. I 
probably get a couple of days out of it before you start noticing the change. When I tip, when I use my unbleached organic cotton, I can get about a week out of it before I have to re-wick. Okay, so here we go. Wicked up, wicked up. And now let's do an auto focus on here. Just do a little snip on the ends there. Just going to do this standard wicking. Okay, here we go. We are wicked up. Both sides wicked up. Okay, let's go ahead and juice it up. Today I'm going to juice it up with ambrosia. And you guessed it, steam juice. Only time I ever use another juice is if I'm out of my steam juice and I'm waiting on my order to come in and I need to get some juice right away. Then I'll go to a local shop. Other than that, steam juice is my go-to juice. I'm actually waiting on another order to come in. Man, I'm getting sloppy here. What the hell is up with me tonight? Don't mind me. It's been a long day. As you know, we're coming into our Christmas season here. Getting busy, busy, busy. I'm kind of tired. A different dropper. That dropper seems to be pain in my butt. Looking good. Again, these are these batteries aren't even fresh. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my batteries real quick. And put some fresh batteries in right off the charger. There will be a difference. talking about yeah this is gonna be one bad mother okay so juice everywhere. 
going to do this. Okay, I'm just lining up the side, the, not the center hole, but that brings my coils right behind the air holes. Okay, and here we go, folks. Okay, two air holes open. There's the first burn. Don't laugh if I choke. I'll laugh for you. Wow, it's not extremely hot, very productive. Let me crack the tip, the air holes on top. <laughs> Hold on one second. Good stuff right there. Okay, let's try that one more time. <coughs> Got a good strong throat hit off of that one. Now that's a short hit too. It took a nice short hit off of that and it was still very productive. One second hit. Well, there you have it, folks. That is seven wrap, triple parallel, three wires, 22 gauge Nicro. It's actually a really a very nice build on this this atomizer. Uh, if you like a, a warm to hot vape, it's not extremely hot. It's warm to hot. Very productive. The flavor isn't bad. Still, the flavor is still pretty good. You got a lot of coil surface on your wick which helps produce the flavor and the cloud the vapor okay so the more coil surface you have the more productive it's going to be so uh, there you have it I don't know what it ohms out at I don't have a working ohm reader I don't know for some reason I just can't keep those things working but anyway till the next time everybody have a great weekend and vape on